Hi and welcome to Easy Fishing. Uh, what I'm doing this evening is tying hook lengths. Uh, last week on the river I noticed I was running a bit short on pre-tied hook lengths. So I'm just going to run you through how I tie hook lengths. Now it's not going to be the same as everybody else does it but it works for me and has done for years. So what do you need? Well first of all you need some hooks and today I'm tying a size 14 Drennan Super Spade and the line I'm tying it to Drennan Suplex Fluorocarbon 5.6 pounds and 020 in diameter uh, tools you need uh, a hook tire now there are two major types of hook tire on the market there's the Drennan and the Matchman. Now I have both types of hook tire but this is the one that I had to hand, the Matchman. The little plastic uh, rod with a little screw knob that acts as a vice to open and close the jaws here and uh, a double set of pins that push up and down. Dead easy to use. The only other thing I've got with me is a weight. Now I've just nicked the sugar jar out of the house and I'll show you why in a minute. So first of all you need a hook. Take your hook and insert it into the hook tire. Now just put it in, screw the little vice wheel up like so, so it nips the uh, hook tightly. You don't need to go mad tightening it, just so it can't move, so it looks like that. Try and get the hook in the centre like so. Then take your line. Now the reason for this is when I pull the line off here, I want it to um, be reasonably tight to tie the hook with. So I'm just going to pin it under that, like so, and it holds it quite firm. What I'm going to do now is take the line, this is awkward to film on my own, and pass it round the two pegs, and then back towards me over the front of the hook. Now I know this isn't easy to see, so I'm just going to move the video to give you a close-up. So it goes round the two pegs, like so. And then across the front of it, trapping half a turn on the hook tire, traps the line against the shank. Then continue rotating the hook tire for about eight turns. Then bring the line back underneath the loop with a hole in it, press it down and taking the main line pull gently. You'll see a loop starting to form. Once that pulls down to the knot on the shank, lubricate it and gently continue pulling. Then undo the clamp and carry on pulling until you see the end of the line pull through. At this point check the line is coming out from underneath the bottom of the spade. If it doesn't just twist it slightly the whole knot on the shank.
then grasping the main line and the tag end pull tight and you end up with a very neat what's called a domhoff type or whipping knot so take your scissors and just snip the tag end off at the hook leaving a tag end of a couple of millimeters then what you want to do is measure the hook length so it fits in your box now the hook length box I'm using today is a little Preston one it's not my favorite hook box but it's the one that I've got these particular hooks stored in and I want it six inches long this hook length so you can measure it using the pegs in the box No, I don't do it that way. I purchased um, a jig. Uh, this one's made by Ringers. It was only a couple of quid. It's got rubberized feet on it so it doesn't move when you're working on it. And all I do is placing it down on the table here. Let's move this tray so you can see. And what I do is I take the hook and place it on the six inch marker. This hook one is three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve inches. So I'm just put the hook on the six inch marker, holding it in place with your finger, and run the line round the peg on the end. Like so. Then Keeping the two ends of the line pinched in your hand, lift the hook off and lift the loop of line off. Then either use tying a loop with your fingers or in my case a uh, census loop tie which I prefer, tie a small loop. Whatever knot you choose to use or however you tie it, make sure it is a good one. So I'm just going to use a loop tie three turn loop, plenty of lubricant, slide it off the loop tire, make sure it's nice and tight and snip off the tag ends and you are left with a nice neatly tied six inch hook loop. Just select the appropriate place on your box, I have mine marked out in marker pen on labels. The hook on one end. And there you have a perfectly tied hook link. Now I will be honest and admit, there's two jobs in fishing that I really do not enjoy doing. One of them is tying pole rigs and the other is tying hook lengths. But there are several reasons you should tie your own. One, it saves you money. Tying your own is the cost of a packet of hooks and a spool of line. And you can tie a lot of hooks for very cheaply. The other advantage is, and this is probably more important, you can choose what brand type size of hook to what brand type or length of line you, do you feel you require. In this case it's for my pole rigs on the river and I have found that a six inch hook length is about right and that holds true for 90 percent of pole work the only time you would consider shorter is maybe if you're fishing for F1s when a 3 or 4 inch hook length might be preferable. The other thing is, too many anglers are lazy. When they're fishing, if they get a blunt hook, they won't change it. Or if they get a knot in the hook length, they won't bother to change it. But if you've got a pre-tied hook length in your hand, all you've got to do is unloop it or unclip it, depending on what method you're using. Put a new one on, 
you're fishing again within a few seconds. And that's a big advantage. Um, so that's how you do it. It looks a little fiddly, but trust me, after you've done it a few times, it, it is an easy job, if boring. You can also tie hook lengths with hair rigs um, to a bait band, a bayonet, a quick or a push stop, whatever you want. And I will do another on that. But this is your basic hook length tying. Now I have lots of hook boxes, I haven't got them with me, the only one I've got here is this uh, Preston one. Like I say, it's not my favourite, but um, it'll do. Um, what else can I say? It's boring, I would admit, but it's necessary. And if you buy one of these little ringer measures, or if you use a Guru hook box that has uh, measuring pegs inside it, as does the Preston, and you're away. So I hope that was clear and easy to understand. And trust me, pre-tied hook lengths are a necessity if you are serious about catching fish. They give you the flexibility of choice, which you don't always have in ready tied. For instance, I know of nobody that offers pre-tied hooks to fluorocarbon. And I am switching more and more to fluorocarbon for my hook lengths for various reasons. In this case, it's for on the river and it's pretty snag resistant. It's quite tough, it sinks well and on a clear river it's less visible to the fish the makers claim. Uh, I don't know how anybody can say that because fish is obviously differently to ours. So. But it definitely sinks well, it's resistant to sunlight, uh, ordinary nylon deteriorates in sunlight. But that's by the by. So there you go. I hope you found that easy. Uh, practice it a few times using bigger hooks and stronger line until you get the hang of it. Like I said, there are two types of hook tires, the Drennan or the Matchman. I've demonstrated this with a Matchman because that's what I had to hand. So until next time, tight lines.